Hi everybody, this is Trevor Hall, Marketing Director for Global UAV. Welcome back to the uh, Global UAV uh, Investor Update and podcast we've been producing. It's been a while, but today I've got a special treat. Not only do we have Mike Burns, CEO of Global UAV, but we're also joined by Jeremy McCullough, Manager of Business Development and Operations at Global UAV. Welcome, fellas. Hey, Trevor. It's great to be here. Hi, Trevor. So we just wanted to highlight uh, the mission over Victoria that we announced earlier this week. And if you haven't seen the news release, uh, Global UAV and Indro Robotics conduct first sanctioned UAV mapping missions over a Canadian city. Uh, The mission was actually done June 14th, 2018. Uh, And Jeremy, just wanted to touch base with you. What was the purpose of this flight and who was it for? Yeah, sure. So the flight was for the City of Victoria Emergency Management Services Division. And what they were really looking for was a high-resolution map of the downtown core so they could conduct some civil planning, but mainly for emergency planning in case of a disaster. And who were you working with for this mission? Yeah, so this mission was flown in a partnership with Indra Robotics, um, the City of Victoria Emergency Management Services, and Transport Canada representatives were there. So it was, uh, it was a good mission. Very good. And so uh, the subsidiary High Eye Aerial Imaging was the partner in the mission, uh, subsidiary of Global UAV. Uh, Mike, can you touch base on the uh, development of uh, that subsidiary under the under the company? Absolutely. So this this was a pretty significant step uh, for the industry uh, countrywide, but also on an international scale. There haven't been that many um, properly sanctioned flights by. Uh, Transport Canada. This was the first that was done over a Canadian city uh, with no disruptions to daily life for the population. Uh, And it really shows that High Eye is at the forefront of uh, of being able to conduct safe operations um, and has the eye of the regulators in terms of a a quality service provider in what we do. So that level of professionalism is something that we've built up in High Eye for that capacity. And uh, it's clear that we're getting the recognition and starting to pull in those types of, of special projects uh, that that really are in our wheelhouse to complete. So it was, it was an exciting day for the for the entire industry, but also obviously for our company. There's a there's a lot of excitement about this project that we did. Yeah, we'll get into some of the feedback in a little bit later. That's one question I have. Uh, we did produce a short little video about the operations. That you can find that on Global UAV's YouTube channel. Uh, but in that uh, video, uh, JF, who was the uh, uh, pilot, uh, chief pilot for the operation, he did mention that there was some uh, airspace uh, situations that they had to work, work around uh, just due to the vicinity of the downtown cor- corridor of Victoria. Uh, Jeremy, uh, what were those specific air management situations the crew needed to work around? Sure. So um, if you're familiar with the downtown of Victoria, where we were operating was right by a very busy seaplane base, where you essentially have, you know, float planes flying in and out of Victoria, sometimes almost every five minutes. Um, You also have the Victoria International Airport, which is fairly close to Victoria. So in order to safely conduct the mission, we coordinate with the air traffic control with um, the Victoria International Airport and the flight service station, as well as with Transport Canada, just to make sure that we're always aware of when the planes were coming in and when there may have been some gaps so we could safely operate. Now, I know a lot of people familiar with the industry are interested in the beyond visual line of sight and a lot of testing going on within Canada. Uh, Mike, there's a lot of progress happening right now uh, with testing done by various companies in the country. How does this mission specifically compare to those BVLOS tests? That's a good question. So, so the biggest uh, difference is that this was a real world mission. It was a, um, a paid contract and uh, something that was done in the real life scenario. It wasn't done in a test range. It wasn't done as part of a, a demonstration project. Um, this was a, a requirement that came forth from the city of Victoria and uh, Indoor Robotics and Global UV responded to, to get the work done. So that's the biggest difference. But on the other side, uh, this mission was flown um, completely within visual line of sight. We had visual observers that were stationed uh, on on the top of, of buildings to get the survey done. And like Jeremy had mentioned before, uh, we flew it in, in extremely high density and very busy air traffic uh, from commercial manned aviation standpoint. 
Um, being able to coordinate in that type of airspace is is really groundbreaking for the industry. Uh, so this was a, a very smoothly uh, executed uh, visual on a site flight in uh, in an urban environment and busy airspace, and it, it it really is the first of its kind. So from that standpoint, um, there's quite a few differences from the from the beyond visual on a site uh, activities that are going on in the country, uh, but it also shows that um, in some cases, uh, BV loss isn't the answer for these types of surveys uh, when you're doing things in in very high density traffic areas. Uh, you know, that nothing can really replace having that visual on a site uh, flight um, control over your airspace and, and what you're doing. Jeremy, one of the questions we received uh, since the announcement in the video was uh, people wondering why uh, the crew decided to use the EB fixed wing aircraft uh, instead of the Nova Aerial Pro Scion. Sure. So, what that really came down to was kind of a demand from Transport Canada. So, Although the ProSign is more than capable of conducting this type of mission, um, Transport Canada is still concerned that, you know, we were flying this mission over top of a live city. You know, there are still people underneath us. And the ProSign does weigh in at a couple of kilograms. And when you look at the Sensefly EB, it's basically made out of foam, weighing in at about, you know, just under two pounds. So from a safety perspective and a risk management perspective, Transport Canada was just a lot more comfortable with us operating the Sensefly EV, just due to the fact that, you know, if there was an incident um, and it were to crash, then the, the damage would have been quite limited with that drone. So just a safety perspective um, was why we went with the Sensefly EV. Yeah, all right. Uh, we're seeing a lot of buzz being generated from this Victoria mission. Mike, what has the feedback been from your seat as CEO of Global UAV since this mission? We we just announced the uh, the news on this project recently. Um, we had some constraints in, on being able to announce it right after it was done. So as soon as we were able to, we got it out there. But so far, the feedback has been really good, uh, especially within the drone industry and within the uh, within the regulatory side. Um, the feedback has been really really strong and, and positive. Uh, it. it it really does set what we're doing apart from a lot of other companies out there. Uh, being able to pull this off along with Indro um, Robotics, it, it's something that hasn't been done before, and that's getting a lot of recognition, especially the urban aspect. And, and you know, there's always been a lot of buzz about everything from uh, drone deliveries in urban environments and emergency response in urban environments and uh and different types of infrastructure management uh, being conducted. And there has been a lot of small-scale flights uh, performed in very controlled environments in cities before, but nothing on the scale of actually mapping an entire downtown core without disrupting any of the activities uh, of the city. So from that side, it's, it's been a really uh, groundbreaking event and we're getting a lot of recognition for it. So it, it, it's really exciting on, on our side uh, to see the feedback coming through. And if you look at the progression of Global UAV over the last year, and it uh, continues to diversify its uh, services and offerings, I mean, if you, you think we there's a foothold in geophysical survey work with the uh, drone-based mag survey, in the last few months we've talked a lot about military applications, uh, now we're talking about urban mapping. You know, what's next? Uh, yeah, it's a good question. We're, we're definitely in a different place today than we were at this time last year, corporately, uh, and, and in terms of what we can offer both on the services side, which is our, our revenue stream, but also on the technology development side and where we're at uh, being able to push into new, um, new environments in the, in the UAV market. Part of that uh, comes with the experience that we have as an operating company altogether, but also the ability to respond to um, R&D challenges where there's gaps in, in that market. So Global, at, Global UAV at its heart is really a technology development company with a services wing. Uh, so, you know, you touched on the, the drone geophysics side of the business. Um, that's, that's growing rapidly, and we have a really strong team that's executing those missions on the ground, but also uh, management that is 
opening up into new markets, um, and and that company is growing uh, significantly as we saw from the last last quarter revenue amounts. Uh, so that's really exciting. But at the same time, behind the scenes, and this is kind of the the little secret or the hidden gem of global, is that uh, we're working on stuff that nobody else is doing right now in the UAV industry. And and uh, that type of technology development doesn't happen overnight or in a week. Uh, but when we bring it to market, it's going to be something that's not there yet. And so we we have a real opportunity um, to be the leaders in a lot of spaces that other companies just don't have the capacity to even explore. Uh, and and that is the most exciting part about where we're at. So it, it it's been a it's been a real um, progressive journey through. Uh, where we started to where we are now, and, and you know, it, as as you can see from the news that we're putting out, uh, things move quickly in this company, mm-hmm. and and that's sort of been our focus. And it appears that this Victoria mission has really just planted another foundation for diversification. So congratulations on a successful mission. Um, thank you, Jeremy. Thank you, Mike. Is there anything else uh, either you two wanted to add? Thanks, Trevor. Uh, not nothing we can talk about right now, but stay tuned for more exciting uh, news coming out of the company. We have a lot of stuff in the pipelines and some pretty big projects that we're working on. So uh, it, it, it's a really exciting year for Global. Great. Thank you, gentlemen. We'll talk to you again soon. Thanks, Trevor. Thanks, Trevor.